for all the questions entering this offseason about whether the Miami Dolphins would get a quarterback to develop or just serve as insurance for Ryan Tannehill, they enter the summer with this much certain. They again won't have the issues that come with quarterback competition. Okay, the issues might be understandable, even necessary problems. But they're issues nonetheless. Look at Pittsburgh, where Ben Roethlisberger has criticized the third-round pick of Mason Rudolph. Look at Baltimore, where Joe Flacco won't talk with rookie Lamar Jackson. Roethlisberger, who is 36, said he doesn't know how drafting a quarterback helps us win now. The point is, Rudolph doesn't. He's an investment in the future. Jackson is another matter, and Baltimore is a first-round pick. You can understand a veteran player not embracing a rookie there to take your job at some point. But it's not a good look for Flacco or Roethlisberger. They know what's ahead, too. Teammates will study the young player. If he looks good, they might even think he should be playing. Jackson, especially, could look dynamic compared to Flacco in practice. That's when the real issues start. Of course, getting a young quarterback might be unsettling in May but can help the team come September. Alex Smith had a great year in Kansas City after Patrick Mahomes was drafted. New England's Tom Brady, okay, he's had a career of great years, did with Jimmy Garoppolo looking ready last year. Were they pushed by competition? How couldn't they be? But all this underscores why the best situation for any of the rookie quarterbacks is Sam Darnold's place with the Jets. It's a good mix of old and young. The starter, Josh McCown, is 39, has been a journeyman, has talked with teams about being a coach and knows his end is near. He has spoken about helping Darnold McCown learn the NFL. Compare that to Cleveland, where veteran Tyrod Taylor wants to start and faces top pick Baker Mayfield. Or Buffalo, where AJ McCarron understandably wants to be a starter and top pick Josh Allen comes in. That's not necessarily a bad thing. That's called competition. Most teams want that. And those teams are dealing with the quarterback position from a position of strength. But if there is one positive for the Dolphins in having David Fales and Brock Osweiler as backups, it's that there's no swirl of attention odd reaction in the locker room and from the incumbent quarterback. As far as the relationship between reserves and starters, it's often testy. Sometimes it's less so, though. Dan Marino asked one thing of his backups that they all did. To pull the jersey over his shoulder pads before a game. It was a superstition, and that's something any position can relate to point two. It's Boston against Cleveland in the Eastern Conference Finals starting Sunday, and that really should give the Heat pause about how far out of the picture they are, as I wrote in my column today. LeBron is a dynasty unto himself. Boston has advanced this far without its two best players. Point three. We're going to see a lot more dime packages from the Dolphins' defense this year with the personnel they've added. Then again, we didn't see hardly any the last two seasons. So they're catching up to the way the game's turned, if you see what they're doing. Point four. So it'll be Cleveland and Golden State in the NBA Finals. Just as everyone knew when they left the finals last year, right? 5. Tweet of the day, with the final day of the Premier League here, a salute to Mo Salah as player of the year, though why they hand out awards before the season is over is a mystery to me, died at sun-sentinel.com, on Twitter at Dave Hyde Sports. To read Dave Hyde's blog click here. On Facebook click here.